Hi, and welcome to Rapid Respiratory Review. Today we are going to be talking about mixed venous oxygen saturation, or SVO2. Mixed venous oxygen saturation is a value expressed as a percent and which is used to show the amount of oxygen that is being extracted at the peripheral capillaries or in the tissues. How is it measured? Normally it is measured by drawing blood from the tip of the pulmonary artery catheter since it is the best representative of complete mixing of blood since it's after the right ventricle and that's where the blood mixes at the uh, prior to it being passed through pulmonary circulation. However, nowadays it is typically just drawn from a central venous catheter due to less need for invasive procedures. So what does SBO2 tell us? SBO2 can be used to tell us the amount of blood we're extracting or using at the capillaries and why the body is acting in the way it is due to this. So normals your CaO2 is 20.1 volume percent at a stat around 90 to 100, and your SVO2 is 15.5 volume percent with a stat around 60 to 80. So this means that venous circulation only uses 25% of O2 sent to it. So if there's more being taken up, then it can be your venous circulation using too much. And if it's higher, then maybe it's not using enough. So, so what can change these normals? For example, if there is an increase in demand at the tissue, such as in the case that can cause an increased PCO2, an increased temperature, increased hydrogen ions, or an increased 2,3-GPG, this will right shift the O2 binding curve. This causes less loading at the lungs, but easier unloading at the tissues. This will lead to a lower SVO2. What may this cause? maybe different problems so such as maybe too much or might look shocky but it depends so how do you balance oxygen delivery oxygen delivery is balanced through demand and consumption oxygen delivery is calculated by your cardiac output times your hemoglobin times 13.8 times your sao2 minus your svo2 so your content uh, times your cardiac output will de to determine your delivery if you minus it by the saturation at your artery and compare it to the venous. Uh, normal O2 consumption is 230 mils per O2 per minute. So looking at the delivery, if your cardiac output is high, you're going to have to increase your satur is low, sorry, you have to increase your saturation of oxygen or give them a higher FiO2 in order to compensate for that. Is if your SVO2 is high, then you're going to have to increase your cardiac output. So it just works by balancing this equation. So, like I was saying, how can you compensate for this demand? So one, you can increase your cardiac output. So pharmacology-wise, you can take either endotropes or chronotropes. So either increase the stroke volume the contractility or increase the rate of the heart which because cardiac output is made by stroke volume times heart rate which a normal individual can do they can increase their cardiac output threefold but in some instances patients who have who are severely sick or septic for example they they can't do that as well because sometimes they're under station or there's some other pharmacology that prevents this but we can do it too an increase in cardiac output will decrease oxygen extraction. Will decrease oxygen extraction. A decrease will increase. A decrease in cardiac output will increase oxygen extraction. Why is this? Is because if you have a lower cardiac output, you have more time at the tissue. Cardiovascular. Yes. Uh, after will. Yeah. So. And based on that, it'll selectively redistribute oxygen in order to compensate for the amount in each. You, or you can also increase in O2 extraction, which is done through an increase in hydrogen ions and a shift in the oxyhemoglobin curve. You, we have a hard time doing this, but it can be done. Healthcare workers can replace blood if it is lost, so a, a transfusion. And so those are the things that we can do to compensate for this and now let's see what will change it so say for example your patient is shivering during shivering you have an increase 
metabolic state, producing more CO2 and decreasing the pH, thus right shifting the oxyhemoglobin curve. This right shift drops your SVO2, so more unloading. The, the use of pancuronium stops this and your pH stabilizes, like it's seen in this graph here. Another way, momentary discontinuation of dobutamine, say for example in the patients who, have, who are in sepsis, who've been through the volume and been through the pressors like vasopressin or level fed, inotrope can increase your cardiac output. This inotrope effect and increase in cardiac output causes less offloading at the tissue due to the increased flow of blood causing a higher SVO2. When the dominion is discontinued, you get more unloading due to the decreased flow. So just like the cardiac output argument, dobutamine changes suctioning, causes SAO2 to severely decrease, and thus your SVO2 to decrease, since your SVO2 is directly related to your SAO2. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.